What's going on, everybody? It's Rob Brunson with Wallace Electronic Sales. We're back again with the electronic intervention. Today, we have a very special guest. We have John Hankey, who's the vice president of sales for Hallmark Nameplate. Um, he's here to talk about it, to us about what Hallmark is, what they do, what it means to be a true U.S. manufacturer. And we're going to talk a little bit about the NFL and Tampa Bay Buccaneers football. Obviously, I'm a Ravens fan, so we'll let him slide and, and bask in that Super Bowl glory. But, you know, we're, we're going to get into that, too. So I'm going to go ahead and bring John in. John, what's going on, man? How are you? Hey, good, Rob. How are you doing today? Thanks for having I'm, me on your show. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. This is uh, this has been really fun to do this with our principals. Um, as you know, Wallace represents uh, represents Hallmark, and we have a great working relationship together. So, it, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on. You know, I know this My is pleasure. something a little bit different. So, sure, tell us absolutely. a little bit about yourself. Yeah, a little bit about myself. Um, I am a happily married man. I have uh, two daughters and uh, five grandkids. Um, I was actually born, like a lot of people in Florida, I was born up north and um, and came down here. A lot of people say, well, you know, when did you come to Florida? And, and my response is always as soon as I could. <laughs> um, so but so I quantify myself as a, as a Yankee by birth and, and uh, Southern by choice. Awesome. Um, I started my career right out of college about uh, May of 1981, believe it or not. So it's May of uh, 2021. So you got me on my 40th anniversary of working in uh, in manufacturing and um, um, you know what we do. Perfect. That's awesome. Um, yep. So tell us a little bit about Hallmark and and what it is that you guys do. Um. Hallmark uh, by trade is a, uh, a technical printing company. Okay. Um, we don't print uh, magazines or anything like that. Uh, we're not in that genre, but we are in the technical printing where the majority of the items that we print are either on plastic um, or they're on metal. Okay. Uh, typically when we print, we'll print what we call uh, reverse surface or back surface printing where all the printing is done in reverse. So when you turn your product over, you have the substrate of material is on the top and the ink is on the bottom. So okay. you can't scratch off the ink. It, it wears very well. Um, cool. Uh, some well, of the yeah. other, uh, I'm sorry, some of, the, some of the other things we do here, we do have um, three full SMT lines. Um, okay. A little bit later in the, in our talk, maybe we can buzz through our website and we can, we can go through, uh, go through you know, some of that stuff as well. Sure. Absolutely. Well, if it's okay with you, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the website and we can, uh, we can take a little gander at that because it is a really nice website, even though you guys are building another one. I think this yeah, one's already right. good. So yeah. the other one's yeah. probably going to be even better. So uh, I'm uh, looking forward to it. Yeah. We're putting a lot of, a lot of work and a lot of effort into it. Absolutely. Rob. Awesome. Well, walk us through this bad boy and, you know, you tell okay. me where, where I should go if I'm interested in Hallmark. Okay, so I think what you first want to find out is, you know, is what you're looking for. Um, right. And, and so we have basically four core competencies here at, at Hallmark. Uh, if you click on, thank you, click on the products tab and go to nameplates. Sure. Um, this is, so in that column that you just pulled down, there's four four different core competencies. Well, like I said, we'll, we'll initially uh, target nameplates. Nameplates uh, uh, are done, um, there's really a couple different, in, in my book, I categorize them as a functional uh, nameplate or a decorative okay. nameplate. Um, it can be on plastic, it can be on metal. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, um, there you go, keep going in right there. So as you can see, as, as these are scrolling by, um, it, for a for a decorative nameplate, it could be your logo, it could be um, some keys, some buttons. The Bayliner there, for example, really is a decorative product branding kind of uh, logo. Okay. Um, and then if you scroll a couple more over to the right, you'll see also the WGS, the DRS. Those are, again, what I would call product branding or a decorative uh, type of logo. I'm sorry, right. type of nameplate. Um, the one right next to it, as you can see, has some 2D barcodes on it. It's got a QR code up in the corner. Actually, has the customer's cage code number on it. And okay. it, so it's a serialized nameplate. This one happens to be done on a metal. Okay. Um, we can we can process the metal in two different avenues. 
One is direct screen printing on the metal. Okay. And the other is a process is what's called um, metal photo, where it's almost a photo process where we develop, for lack of a better term, the image onto the onto the metal substrate. Um, cool. That's a very, very, that's great for outdoors. It's a very robust uh, type of construction. Um, we have some customers that, that make um, trailers that they put this uh, type of nameplate, this type of construction on their trailers because it's right. outdoors, it's in the snow. It, it's going to last. It's going to last. So. Cool. And these would these would something like this have like a UV rating because of uh, if it's outdoor stuff or, you know. Yeah. The, as far yes, we can. So to answer your question on the plastic side, absolutely, we can okay. purchase pre UV coated material. Great. Um, there's also sometimes on the uh, on the metal if we're screen printing it, we can put a UV overlam on it. Okay. Uh, an overlamination. Inherently, the metal photo process itself is, is it has all those type of uh, additives already in it. To okay. Be, um, you know, very, very robust in, in the outdoor applications. Gotcha. Makes sense. I think that's um, not not too much more on, on uh, nameplates. Okay. A lot of people call them stickers. Okay. <laughs> um, but, uh, so there's your simplistic term. Uh, right. It's a glorified sticker, yeah. It's a glorified sticker. Yeah, it's, it's uh, abs absolutely. So you want to shoot over to the graphic overlays? Sure. So we we kind of uh, we have we have our own terms like every company has their own internal terms. Uh, a graphic overlay to us is is kind of a nameplate on steroids. Okay. Um, there might be embossed keys on it. If you could scroll down a little bit there, Rob. Absolutely. Um, yeah, go right. That's a good one. So in the green number one in the center, um, what we do is we would print a trans either a translucent or a transparent ink. Okay. Uh, for LEDs, it could be either a seven-segment LED that's on a customer's board. It could be just a plain, single, functional RGB LED. Could be anything. Um, but we have translucent windows that allow that light to shine through. Right. It also has a bit of a diffuser in it, so you don't see the component body behind okay. it. But you, but you just really see the light that it, that's emitting out of that out of those diodes. So. Gotcha. Um, a little bit lower to the right uh, is um, what we would uh, term embossed keys. There's many, many types of embossing. Um, one thing here at Hallmark is that everything that we do is custom. Okay. There, there's nothing that you can, we don't have a catalog. Uh, we don't have a, a, a room inside. People can come in and say, hey, I, wanna, I want four of those and six of those. Wrap right. them up and, and tell me how much I owe. It truly is a custom business that we're in. Okay. Um, back to the overlay, we have uh, right below that over there. Yep, there's some uh, uh, round circular windows. We can put a translucent white in there. Even an adhesive, if we roll the adhesive over the complete back, there's sometimes that would give enough um, translucency that it hides that component, again, behind. Uh, behind the graphic overlay. Gotcha. And then uh, the last one is uh, cutouts. You know, we have multiple ways that we can um, die cut the part. Okay. Die cut being the general term, sure. kind of like Kleenex or tissue, but die cut, it could be die cut, it could be plot cut, it could be laser cut. We have a variety of different equipment so we can pick the best process uh, for the application and the quantity and so on and so forth. Great, cool. Um, that's really on the, uh, on the graphic overlays, we can go to the membrane, membrane switches. switches. So you're going to look at these and say, well, geez, John, that looks like an overlay. Yeah, correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, the difference between the overlay and the membrane is the overlay has no electronics to it. That's put okay. onto a printed circuit board or put gotcha. onto a bezel that has something coming up from behind it, some electro mechanical sub-assembly that comes up from behind it. Membrane switches truly are uh, the electronic interface or the user interface before um, uh, how the user interfaces with the product. So you sure. can see there's a ribbon tail that comes off of there that would plug into uh, the, the, the main board on the uh, customer product. Um, I think the easiest way to describe this is, is um, 
for everybody to understand what it is, is look at your microwave, right? Your microwave right. in your house, you go up there, you hit popcorn, you hit enter, and all of a sudden the machine turns on and goes. That's the user interface portion that we can build, help design, use your design, whichever. You know they made that button because of people like me who cannot pop popcorn without burning it. It's, Absolutely, it's impossible Absolutely. for me to do. You know, I feel uh, like the directions are always wrong. Yeah, I mean, yep. the potato is a wonderful thing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so this is a really cool thing that we were talking about before we came on. It's yeah, kind yeah. of a, a front and back view of exactly what these things are. Yep. So you want to explain this? Sure. So um, what you're seeing on the right hand side of that uh, of the slider is actually the, the printed circuit board portion. In this particular case, um, this product was built with a printed circuit board as a backer. Um, mm -hmm. We look at all the different requirements. Our, our biggest goal is really to understand what our customer or our prospect is trying to do. Right. How can we help? We, you know, we've been around Rob for 60 plus years. We, okay. we have thousands and thousands of products that we've designed help to design, you know, a lot of our clients come to us and, and um, you know, have really good specifications. Right. And then there's the other half of them come and say, I know what I want. I don't know how to build it. Can, can sure. you guys help us out? So in this particular case, the, the right side, as I mentioned, is the printed circuit board side of it. And then we print, so we do all that fabrication here as far as buying the board and doing whatever population we need to do here. Mm -hmm. And then we would manufacture the graphic overlay, put it together for them. Uh, if their requirement is to test it or program it or do anything like that, we have that capability in-house right here at Hallmark to be able to give them a turnkey solution that, for lack of a better term, is dock to stock, right? Right. I mean, it leaves our dock. It goes into your stock. You don't do anything to it. You just pull it out and stick it on your production line. Right. So it's a total solution. You know what we call we call it cradle to grave. Sometimes you know. There you go. Right. So really cool. I think this is a really cool graphic too to understand exactly what it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And then you know that we could go down here, but yeah. we kind of already talked about this, but this is still a good example of how everything plugs in. And it's nice yeah. just to see that graphic where we can slide back and forth, knowing what's yeah. behind all this knowing stuff. Knowing what's behind right? these, right. Um, and, and our printing capabilities encompass not only, um, you know, ink as far as red, blue, green, yellow, pink, whatever color you want. Sure. Um, it also includes conductive ink and a couple other types of, uh, you know, inks in, in that kind of series. So we're actually screen printing something that's conductive. Mm -hmm. In the membrane switch, there's a spacer layer that holds those two conductive um, layers apart. And when you push the popcorn button, you're closing that circuit and making that, you know, making that connection. Right. Very cool. And these, yep. And these can be terminated. Again, everything is custom. You say, hey, I want to put this in a, in a ZIF header on my board. We'll, we'll terminate it for ZIF. No problem. Right. Neat. I just love this thing. I can't get over that. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> it is so kind I guess, of cool. I yeah. played with it a lot myself, actually. So. so I guess the last one would be electronic assemblies by default. Yep. Yeah. So um, interestingly enough, um, uh, Hallmark um, had discussed with a couple different uh, clients regarding overall scope of what we do. And this goes back uh, uh, quite a few years. And um, the decision was made that we are not only gonna be able to supply you uh, with membrane switches and printed circuitry and things like that, but we're also gonna get into the electronic assembly business. Now this goes, like I said, goes back 20 plus years. Right. Um, currently today we have three full SMT lines. Mm -hmm. um, we have two uh, AOI machines, which are automated optical inspection equipment. Uh, one is 2D and one is 3D. Right. Um, we use those for inspection of the boards, component placement, solder joints, you know, stuff like that. Um, we have three selective solder machines. Uh, two are Rojas, one is tin lead. Okay. So board washing system. We have x-ray capabilities. We really have some impressive equipment um, for the size of the organization that we are. 
for sure. Uh, so our capabilities with that in with that with those uh, pieces of equipment, our capabilities include, um, you know, we can either do it turnkey, which mm -hmm. would be, hey John, here's your Gerber file, here's my Gerber file, here's my bill of material, go, right. buy everything, right. do everything. You can use us as a labor center. Um, a lot of people say, hey, you know what? I'm going to buy all the boards. I'm going to buy all the components, but I'm going to give it to you and you do your thing. Gotcha. N no problem. We, we can do that. We built the IPC standards one, two, and three. And these are all um, the machines up here, yeah? Yeah, There's those are uh, similar. Correct. Those are similar to the machines that we have in our facility. Right. Yeah. It gives you the general yeah. idea, though. It gives you the general idea. Correct. Cool. Yeah. And as you can, I mean, there's a ton of stuff here, you know, there going a, through all the products. I mean, there's a lot to unpack, you know. Absolutely. And, you know, um, uh, when I went to school, I went to school for mechanical engineering. So a lot of this stuff, I, I've been here at Hallmark just over two years now. And uh, I, I can tell you, I learned more in the last two years and, <laughs> you know, about this kind of uh, industry than I have my whole career. So it's, it's kind of exciting. It's something new and Right. And, um, and I just, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I can answer uh, all the questions, you know, that uh, that our clients or our prospects ask us. I think, um, you know, we, we run out of a, a 30,000 foot facility right here in uh, in Mount Dora in central um, Florida. Um, I think one thing to note about Hallmark um is that you know not only about the that we do different stuff every day, it's um, the fact that we're we're small enough to react, mm -hmm. um, but we're large enough to deliver. And, sure, and so it's a great a way to look at it. You, you know, a lot of times you'll go to a a larger uh, CM for lack of a better term, somebody that can do these kind of box build turnkey solutions, and they look at your quantities and say. You know, we're, we're, thank you, but we're really not interested. Right. Um, that's right. kind of the, the hallmark niches. We, we fill a lot of those gaps. And again, we, we we're small enough that we can, we can do some stuff probably quicker, you know, a lot of times than, you know, than the, uh, than the larger companies can. Absolutely. And that's a, that's a big advantage to have uh, nowadays for sure. So one thing that, you know, I wanted to talk to you about because, you know, we have 20 manufacturers, right? And you are one of the few who are a true U.S. manufacturer. And we're going to, we're going to talk about the elephant in the room that, that is COVID here in just a second, but, you know, it kind of ties all together. And I was, you know, for someone who doesn't know what a true U.S. manufacturer is, what is its advantages, you know, Ex explain that to the audience exactly what that means to be a true U.S. manufacturer and the things and the advantages, I guess, if you will, that you've seen because of that. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. Um, everything we do, you know, like I said, we, we do right here out of our, our facility in Central Florida. Um, over the course of uh, the last few years, especially, you know, with with the COVID thing that we that we were going through, uh, technically, I guess we're we're all still uh, going through it. Right. Um, there was, um, you know, a lot of things that, uh, for lack of a technical term, got messed up. Right. Um, with uh, as simple as shipping product and, and getting product here and there, we had. Um, quite a few uh, inquiries and RFQs from customers, prospects that came to us and said, you know, I usually do all this stuff offshore. Mm -hmm. I can't get my product. I, I can't get anything. Can right. you be the stopgap for me? Can you help me out? Um, and there was a lot of cases that, that we were able to turn something in what would typically be a, you know, four or five week turnaround time in, in two or three weeks. Right. Um, we put on extra shifts. We, we did the things that we needed to do to be able to help, um, you know, the people that just flat out couldn't get their product. Uh, a lot of that is medical, right? I mean, sure. uh, uh, Hallmark is uh, ISO 9001, uh, 2015, and also 13485, which is, um, which is the med device uh, certification through ISO. 
Um, right. sure. so people will recognize that they understand what that means in industry today. And, and they say, okay, I got to go talk to that guy <laughs> um, because they have their systems in place to be able to support, you know, what we need to do. Right. So right. I think there's, you know, there was, there was different things that happened in the, in the previous administration with tariffs and all that played a role into sure. it. It kind of made the, the playing field, at least in my humble opinion, a little bit more even. Sure. Um, so there was some, there was, you know, I never want to say there's good things that come out of something, a bad situation, but typically I think, Rob, if you look, you can usually find something good that, that came out of a situation that, for all practical purposes, appeared to be a really, you know, really bad thing. A hundred percent. A lot of times when bad things happen, you, you find some opportunities in there and you find ways to do things differently. You know, that's business, that's life, that's family, you know, and it's kind of across the board um, yeah, to, to, to kind of touch on that point. You know, we've seen this a lot too, where people just not being able to get product from overseas that in and out of itself costs money. Right. Because right. if you're not oh, making yeah. anything, you're not shipping anything, you're losing money day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. So it, part of being a you, you're one of, I believe, three or four true U.S. manufacturers that we represent. And we've oh, seen okay. a lot of success with that just because people can get their product and that, right. you know, that there's the value that you can put on actually being able to receive product. You, I don't even know if you can really it's even, you know, measurable, right? As, a, yeah. as opposed to saying, well, I'm going to have to wait, you know, 12 weeks to get this from Asia or Europe or wherever, you know, being able to get it from Florida and it get on a FedEx truck and be shipped to you right. in two to four weeks. I mean, the value of that is, it, it just can't be understated. Yeah. Um, Agreed. So you kind of touched on a little bit, just kind of some of the challenges with COVID. Um, as far as Hallmark goes, did you want to elaborate any further on, was there anything specifically that when it all happened, you guys were like, oh man, you know, we need to do X, Y, and Z. What, what were those challenges and what did that look like for you guys? Um, I, I think, uh, um, um, it's simple to say that, that everybody had, has a challenge, right? In, in Absolutely. What's going on, right. Uh, no, no disagreement there. Um, you know, it was. Um, being being with the certifications that we have, being with the industries that we serve, um, Hallmark uh, did not close uh, for one day. Oh, that's amazing. During, during this whole process, uh, we're still going through it, right? We're, we're still not. Uh, I, I feel a little bit blessed because we're in Florida. Sure. And, um, right, wrong, or indifferent, whatever side of the fence you're on, um, we're pretty open down here. I mean, yep. uh, uh, it, it just kind of is what it is. Sure. Um, so I, I think the neat thing that I saw was that there was so many things going on um, in people's personal lives um, and all the things they had to do, the, the kids being out of school, the, you know, just the, the monstrosity of all the things that were affecting our, our day-to-day lives. Exactly. And, uh, and the employees at Hallmark, showed up to work every day that's awesome i can't i'm 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 proud to be their colleague um that speaks volumes for the integrity uh, of the employees that we have here 100 percent. i'm just blown away by how um we just we just kept you know pulling the rope in the same direction and trying trying to support our customers yeah Um, you know we we print on plastic, right? I, I mm-hmm. said that a little bit ago. You know what else they make out of plastic? They make face shields. That's right. We actually turned a section of our manufacturing facility into making face shields and donating them to first responders and to the right down the road to the police department and to the mm-hmm. fire department. Um, we reached out to our rep groups, to, to your group, um, and said, hey, um, you know, if you if you if your sister works in a hospital and they they can't get the stuff, give me an email. Tell yeah, me who yeah. to send it to. We'll ship twenty five or thirty, uh, you know, face shields, and and we'll put your name, a donation on behalf of Hallmark and Rob Brunson. Yep. There you and go. I, Let us know how else we can help. So. And I want to touch on that a little bit. <clears throat> so, Julie Serpinot, who is our marketing manager here at Wallace. 
Her whole entire family is from up north, and her sister works in a hospital. Um, you guys sent us face shields, and we got those up to her sister, and they were so appreciative for that. Oh, that's cool. And and to touch and to touch on the other thing about the guys and the gals always showing up to work at Hallmark. I'll say this: I work with Tom Keith, and I work with Tom Bush. You know, I call him Tom Squared a lot, and <laughs> I'll. And I'll put this, I'm, I'm serious about this. Every yeah. single time I call those guys, they are in such a good mood and mm -hmm. they're always happy. They're always vibrant. They're just really happy people to talk to. And it, it's really pleasant, you know, and this was through the pandemic. I've been doing this a year and a half, right? So the majority of my career at Wallace has been during a pandemic, <laughs> right? Which is okay. We've, lear we've learned a lot from it and it's a good thing. Sure. But, you know, in the, in the dead middle of a pandemic, I'd call up Tom Keith or Tom Bush and they'd answer the phone and just be happy as can be, you know, and that it's really helpful when you're going yeah. through something like that, to, to surround yourself with people like that, to get to work with people like that. And I'm not a customer, right? You know, I'm, I'm here to help you guys sell your product and, and bridge that gap between customer and manufacturer. But, you know, I'm sure for a customer's perspective as well, when you pick up the phone and you just talk to somebody who's just in a good mood, I mean, it yeah. just, it changes so much. And, you know, I, I, I completely agree with you on that. And, mm -hmm. um, I shout out to your team mm -hmm. uh, for doing that. I actually did not know that you guys didn't shut down a single day. That's a yeah. significant accomplishment and definitely something that you guys should be proud of. Yeah, um, de definitely, definitely proud of that. And, and proud of the, all, all the colleagues here. Like I said, it's for everything that was going on for everybody, um, you know, to, to put eight, 10 hours a day. Every for sure. Day to work, it's yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud to be working with this group here. Though. Oh yeah, sure. I would be too. I didn't. I seriously, I didn't know that. I think that's mm -hmm. really cool. That's a really cool story. So, mm -hmm. kind of touching on COVID a little bit. You know, since all this happened, especially people like me and what I do, we've really had to adopt different kinds of technology, right? Um, so, one of the questions that I would have is, you know, has technology, you know, in the last 15 months or maybe over the course of five years, I don't know, you can talk about it however you want. Has that changed any of your processes? And if you've made adjustments during COVID, do you see any of that stuff sticking around? Yeah, that's, um, that's a, that's another interesting subject. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, you know, by trade, you and I are road warriors, right? We're, That's we're right. Supposed to, we're supposed to be on the road, uh, not not sitting in an office. So, um, yeah, definitely. You know, the Zoom meetings, the team team meeting teams, I think it's called. Yep. Um, yeah. There's there's multiple things we've been we've been on Zoom meetings with with some of your staff as a, hey, how are you guys doing? More than you know potentially project specific subjects. Sure. Um, you know, I, I've made an effort to try to uh, be in touch as, as often as makes sense um, with all of our, our rep groups out there, because the way that we do business um, has changed. And, and it's my opinion, it's probably changed forever. Um, you know, on an average Hallmark would do, uh, I don't know, I'm going to say probably, 10 to 12 trade shows a year. Wow. wow. Um, we haven't done any. Right. Um, right. I actually walked a trade show a, a couple weeks ago. It was in our backyard. It was in Orlando, one that we typically did every year, but we've elected to, uh, to forego them at least initially, but still walk them to see what the heck is going on out there. Right. Right. So, you know, I, I've been doing trade shows a really long time. I walked the trade show. I know half of the, you know, the exhibitors there. Sure. And, um, so I, I've solicited feedback from them and they said, well, you know, there was, you know, some people said it was good. Some people said it was light. Right. Um, right. You know, it used to be, you go to the trade show, you visit customers during, during the week there. Also, you go out to dinner a couple of times, you know, you do that kind of thing. Right. Uh, right. I honestly believe Rob that, 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 that may be a thing of the past. I, I don't know. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's more of my, uh, uh, my generation for lack, lack of a better term. Sure. That, that was so accustomed to doing those year after year after year and seeing the same customers and some new prospects come down the road. And, 
or down the aisle way, I should say, of the show. So yeah, definitely th those couple things have changed um, the way that we do our business. Uh, you had mentioned we're building a new website. Um, so we've, um, we've solicited the, the services of a, of a local company here um, and they are building a new website for us. Uh, they are also helping us with our digital marketing. Cool. Uh, and they're also helping us with our SEO optimization. Nice. A nice. um, couple of these terms I'm throwing out. I just learned because I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm SEO is really important. <laughs> SEO is really important. <laughs> but it sounded really good, didn't it? Yeah. No, it's you sounded exactly like you knew Did it? Like, okay, what you good. guys were doing. I, I would have been sold. You gave yourself away, but okay. everyone would have been sold. So. <laughs> No, but that's all great stuff, you know, and kind of to touch on your point of, of the of the trade shows, you know, as representatives, we have an organization called ERA and usually we have an ERA convention, you know, it was in Texas, what would be close to two years ago now. And this year we ended up doing them virtually and it, you know, it went really well. I don't think it's, you know, you know, there's nothing like sitting across the table from somebody, right? There, it's just, it's an impossible thing to mimic. Teams calls are close, but you know, the whole virtual trades, uh, the whole virtual ERA thing was, was really well done, you know, and I enjoyed it. I think at the same time, most people would admit who are part of that organization that they're ready to get back and, you know, see each other again. Cause most of those people are friends. I'm the new guy, right? I'm the little baby of the group, but most of those people have known each other for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. So not right. being able to see, forget the part of working together, but not right. being able to see your friends right. is, is, is tough for people. Uh, so I, I agree. I think, I think it'll be interesting to see how those events, if you will, uh, kind of unfold uh, as the years and the go by. So yeah. very good. I, I agree with you on that as well. So I want to talk to you about leadership and how leadership really played a role for your company through this pandemic. And, you know, we can even talk without the pandemic, just the culture of Hallmark and how leadership is so important uh, for the foundation of y'all's company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, you know, le leadership is, is obviously very important, no matter, no matter when or where it is, obviously. Sure. Right? But, but I think, um, you know, our, our leadership uh, through the pandemic era are, and, and we could quantify leadership as not only just the ownership, uh, right. you know, the, the gentleman that owns the company. Um, that was huge for us. Um, it was, it was, um, I think they did a wonderful job of keeping us all together, uh, keeping us focused on what was important. And, you know, a couple of the most important things were obviously you need to take care of your family. Right. That, that was broadcast to all the employees by ownership here, by leadership here, is that, you know, you need to take care of your families and, and, and we need to take care of our customers. Um, that is probably one, you know, if, if not the most important thing for our leadership here is customer focus. Sure. It's, you know, we understand that without customers, it's you know, tough to run a business. It's kind of hard to run the business. Right? That's what they tell me. You know? Yeah. And so. we also know they, they very rarely, I have not seen any today come knocking on our front door. Right. Um, so, you know, there's that, that level of effort associated with that as well. But I sure. think, you know, as best as we could, um, leadership really held us together through mm -hmm. all of this. Um, and on top of it, as I mentioned, we still did donated face shields. Yeah. So on top yeah. of all the other stuff going on, our leadership, our ownership recognized, hey, we have an opportunity that we could even help people in a different way. Right. So it, it, it just kind of, you know, kind of gives you a little warm fuzzy that, you know, you're in the right place. You know, oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, that, absolutely. that everything was going well. But and, and I know for a fact, I, I have no idea what they were. I can tell you for a fact there must have been some some difficult decisions that, that were made throughout the whole thing, no matter no matter what they were. Sure. Um, yeah. and, and I like to joke with people that, you know, most of the time I'm happy. Um, that I sign the back of the check. And, and <laughs> so, that's right. Uh, that's exactly less, right. A little less stressful for you there. So. That's true. Well, I think that's awesome, man. Um, so I wanted to ask you kind of about young people, right? Like people my age, you know, who are 
starting to try to figure out what kind of career they want to get into, what they're interested in. So let's talk about your role in sales. You know, if you were going to tell a young person, hey, this is why you should get into sales. Why? What's the reason? Wow. Come to the dark side of sales. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I can tell you what I get out of it. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, and so really my, my role, the way that I look at my role, it, probably a couple cliches here, but, you know, I, I try to first and foremost, and what we instill here too, especially with our sales team here is understand what they're trying to do. Right. right? Fundamentally understand where they're going. They can tell you, I need this, but we need to ask enough questions to understand at the end of the day, this is really where, where I'm trying to get to. And, and so, you know, my job, my role is, is, is to make that understanding clear okay. and also yeah. to solve their problems. Like I said, there's a lot of, a lot of um, customers that come to us have great specs and yeah. other ones just say, hey, I got this new gizmo and I need a, I know I need to put a, something that I can push some buttons on. That's about what I know. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, I think, you know, that the times that I've enjoyed most in my role is sitting across the table. Well, of course, it's been a year since I've been able to do that. But sitting across the table, talking to the to the prospect or talking to the customer and, and, and understanding and, and figuring out how I can help them. I mean, yep. really, that's it's as simple as that, Rob. It really is. You know, at the at the end of the day, a little cliche, I want a happy customer. Right. right. Because I know that with, with a happy, satisfied customer, the best possible praise they could give us is another order. That's right. You know, and that's, so, that only happens by you solving a problem. Ab yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're not the only ones on the block that what we do. Right. That's true. It's, it's like when I go buy a car and they tell the salesman, I can I can <laughs> buy a car from anybody. It's yep. up to you whether I buy two from you or not. <laughs> that's right. Perfect. Yeah. So I agree with that, you know, and that's part of the reason I really enjoy it. You get a certain sort of gratification um, from really being able to help someone solve an issue that they're having. Right. Because if everything's all going smooth, you know, odds are my phone doesn't ring. <laughs> you yeah. know, most of the time when my phone rings, I'm always doing customer outreach and stuff like that. But when a customer calls me on my phone, that means, uh oh, there's something going on. I need your help. Um, and then you get a, you get a, you get a nice little sense of gratification whenever, whenever you're able to solve a problem for somebody. And, and I agree with you on that. It's a, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, it's a, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a great career to have, you know, like I said, I've been, I've been doing it for about a year and a half and it's been during a pandemic. I'm still having a really fun time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So now we're going to get to talk about something that I know you will be happy to talk about. And that is okay. the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I heard, um, I heard they Woo! won. I heard they won something, um, you know, and I heard they returned everybody, which is unheard of for a Super Bowl champion. You know, absolutely, usually absolutely. they get poached. So if you watched my last interview with Scott Lindbergh, he's a Broncos fan. So we were talking mm -hmm. about Teddy Bridgewater and what would happen if he got traded, and we ended up turning that into a clip. So what I thought I would do with you today, and I didn't tell you we we're going to do this, uh -oh. but I thought I'd bring up the Tampa Bay Buccaneers schedule. Oh, since okay. it released yesterday, it's timely. Yeah, right? yes, it so was. It was perfect. Okay. I figured what we'd do is we would play a little game, and we would go through the schedule, and you can tell me if you think you're going to win it, and I'll tell you if you think you're going to win it, and we can revisit this after the season's over, and okay. we'll see we'll see how it worked out. So let's okay. let's go ahead and start running through it because I loved y'all's draft. I love the fact that you guys returned everybody. Um, y'all should probably be the favorites in the NFC, except maybe those guys down there during you guys play week three, they might have something to say about that. But so Dallas, y'all gonna win that game or you're gonna lose that game? No, we'll win that game. I don't think they got um, much of a defense. Yep. The other uh, the other reason is is because it's my son in law's favorite team. Yeah. So I hope he takes the time to watch this clip because um, <laughs> the last time we all went together to a game, a, a Buccaneer Cowboy game in Tampa, Dallas won. Right. Uh, so the majority of obviously my family is uh, is Buccaneer fans, and yep. he's the Lone Ranger out there with Dallas. So now nah, we'll 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 take Dallas week one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say you guys are going to win, and you guys are going to win big. Uh, so week two, Atlanta, you win know, or loss. 
these these uh, interdivisional games are always so tricky. Um, yeah. Uh, but I'm no, I, I'm not. You know, I I think I think a lot of people were surprised with our defense last year. I wasn't so much surprised with it because I knew they just need a little bit of time to gel. Yeah. You know, you 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 hold Kansas City out of the end zone in a Super Bowl. That that says something about your D. It and does. by the way, Tom Brady doesn't play defense. No. So uh, Devin <laughs> Devin White's the second best defensive player in the NFL. Yeah. I, behind number ninety nine for the Rams, but. Devin White's incredible. I'm going to say you guys are going to beat Atlanta. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, going to say we're going to beat Atlanta as well. Yeah. All right, so we yeah. might disagree on this one. Okay, so last year, and I'm sorry about this, I had the Rams playing in the Super Bowl. Even with Jared Goff, I thought they were that good of a team. Now that they've added Matt Stadford, I'm going to take the Rams to beat you guys in week three. And it's in Los Angeles. So it's what's a year? Huh? Yeah. That one, that one's a toss-up. That would absolutely could go either way. Right. Um, I got to root for the Bucks. I got to vote for the Bucks. Hey, I, if I'm you end up going seventeen, 17 and 0, I'm not going to be mad at you. I understand. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So we all know what's going to happen in this game. Yeah. You that, know, that's, uh, there'll be a lot of cry. I got a lot of dear friends up in the New England area. So yeah, we'll. we'll We'll this is going to be a big win. Here. Tom might yeah. throw seven touchdowns this game. He, he may just to piss, just to make them all mad. Yeah. Right. All yeah. right. So, week five at Miami. I'm not as high on Miami. A lot of people like Miami. Yeah. Eh, I'm not that high on a man. So I'm going to give you guys the W on that one. Yeah, I would go with us for that. We could we could definitely start five and zero. Oh. Yep, I agree. I think the one challenge is going to be the chart. I mean, the Rams game. Yeah. Week six, Philadelphia is terrible. Yeah, They're terrible. No, no so, problem. Yeah, yeah. No problem. I say so that, that, you know, with a grain of salt. But. Give a W yeah. here. So week seven, Chicago. Now here's my caveat for this. If yeah. Justin Fields is the starting quarterback, I'm going to give the edge to Chicago. The worst game that the that the Bucks played last year was against Chicago. And in my opinion, I could be wrong. We've never seen him play an NFL snap, but I love Justin Fields. And I think he's obviously 20 times better than Mitchell Trubisky. Um right. So I'm going to give the Bears the edge in this game if Justin Fields is starting. There's a huge caveat, right? right. If it's if it's Andy Dalton, you guys will win by 30. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be that that point. You taking the Bears? Right. Or are you going to stay with the? I'll, take, I'll stay with my Bucks. Okay, home with the homers. All right, New Orleans is going to be terrible. You know, I think Jameis Winston, Taysom Hill. I don't care who you roll out there. I don't. Yeah. I don't like where New Orleans is headed. I, I, I'm not a fan. So yeah, I'm going to. Give you guys a W there. Yeah, and and one quick comment on that one, Rob, is you know in two thousand two uh, when we won the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. um, we lost to New Orleans twice during the regular season. Yep. This year we lost to New Orleans twice during the regular season. It's true. Um, so I don't know if I'm hoping we lose both games to them this year. <laughs> yeah. Well, see what's scary about the Buccaneers, right? Is at the beginning of the season you guys struggled a little bit, but mm-hmm. you didn't have any chemistry, right? right? And then towards the end of the year, I mean, you right. guys were hammering people. Yeah. The closest game you guys played was against the next team, and that was Washington. That's right. the closest game you guys That's the played. Closest one. So yeah, we were seven and five last year. Right. We we're exactly. seven and five and went on our run. Right, and I just think the chemistry is going to – because, again, you guys brought everyone back. It's not like right. you're having to find that chemistry again, you know, and so I don't know, man. Yeah. You guys are going to be tough, but I'm still going to give you the edge over, over New Orleans. Okay, um, I'll, take, I'll take that. Washington, I'm taking Fitzmagic. Ryan Fitzpatrick is my guy. He's won me fantasy football games before, so I'm going to take I love that the guy. Redskins here. Yeah. You're going to stay with. I, I won't take the Redskins, but I love Fitzpatrick. Fitzmagic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love Fitzmagic. Harvard guy. One of the few Harvard yeah. players in the NFL. And he um, have like 37 kids or something like that, too. Something some, like I think that might be Philip Rivers, but yeah. Ryan Fitzpatrick okay. might have 37 kids who he doesn't know about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, there you go. <laughs> um, the Giants are awful. You guys are going to win that game. Yeah. I think we all agree on that. This will be interesting. I think I think Indianapolis is a sleeper team to make the uh, Super Bowl if if Carson right. Wentz can figure out what he's doing again. Um, right. And since it's in Indy, I'm going to take the Colts on this one. I'm trying to trying to have a little parity here, you know. So yeah. I right yeah, now only have a trip up game in here for sure. Yeah, I would. Yeah. So I have you guys only at four losses right now. So that's pretty good. Right now I got you okay. at eight and four. Um, Atlanta again. 
I don't yeah. see you guys losing to them. They're just not that no, good. I don't, I don't see that either. Yeah. So Buffalo. I like Buffalo a lot, but it's in Tampa. Right. I'm going to say Tampa on this one. I, uh, However, I do think Buffalo has one of the best coaches in the NFL. Sean McDermott is wildly underrated. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'd, I just – it's it's weird, you know. Quarterback like Josh Allen's a great quarterback, you know, but quarterbacks like Josh Allen just don't beat Tom Brady. I feel like those guys never beat Tom Brady, you know. Mm-hmm. So I don't. I just can't do it. You yeah. you gonna go with the Bucks on that one too? Oh, is yeah, this gonna boy, be the that, one that, slip that up? Could be, that could be that could be a trip up game for us. Yeah, I, I, I'll go with the Bucks. I. You know, I vote even in the in the football pools. They go, you pick the Bucks. I go, I can't root against my team. It's not. I'm gonna, and, I'm gonna know, put a note in here that you were a little worried about the Bills, so I'm, we can I'm go a back. Worried and, about the Bills. Little, okay, little it's a worried. fair team to be worried about in yeah. your defense. And that deep in the season, we don't know who's going to be still time. So yeah, that's true. So the Saints again. I just don't think they're that good, man. Like I just yeah. don't. So I think they'll at least take one out of two just on a. Something weird that happened. Or Division something. stuff. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So the Panthers. So you got Jets. <laughs> this is one heck of a way to end the season. That's a Panthers, thing, Jets, you know? Panthers. Tom Brady might be sitting on the bench on week 16. You guys might it just could. be cruising. It, you know? it could be. Yeah. So yeah. I, you know, this looks like yeah. three wins to me. Right. I'd agree. All right. So yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. So I've got you down for four losses on the season. I think four or five losses, and there's a 17 game schedule now. Right, right. Because when so, we won the Super Bowl in in 2002, we were uh, 12 and four. Right. So we finished the season with. So I'll take the four. Yeah, so I got you at 13 and four. But I'll take so. the under on the four. Okay. Oh, he's taking the under on the four. bold. Oh yeah. All right. So we've got that locked in. So we'll review this, you know, come February. Um, Sounds good. Well, awesome. So what I wanted to do before we get out of here is I wanted to um, let you kind of show everyone how to get in touch with you, right? So if someone wants to get in touch with you, get in touch with Hallmark, they need a quote, they want to check out a nameplate, they want to check out a graphic overlay, a membrane switch, whatever. How do they go about doing that? Um, I'll bring back up the website so you can kind of show them exactly how you would do it. You know, this is my first time trying to get in touch with Hallmark. What do I do? Yep. Well, up there in the top banner, contact us, get a quote. Seems pretty... Um, Intuitive. Pretty, right. And and pretty much every page, Rob, that you end up on okay. should have an icon on it that says request a quote. Yep. Um, again, we, we do so much work here when the client needs help. Um, I would say that's probably a higher percentage than when they hand us a data package and say go. Right. Um, so I'd, I'd never be scared to say, hey, um, you know, how, how can you guys help me out? I know what I want to do, but I don't know how to do it. Um, and so this is probably the easiest way uh, okay. is the form. Those forms come in myself and our inside sales manager, get them. We're the first two people to get them. And then what we do is we go through that. We, we verify that that is a fit for our business model, make sure we can do what, what they want to do. Sometimes we, because we do nameplates, uh, sometimes we'll get, uh, uh, you know, an email from somebody that says, I need a, I need a plaque uh, sure, for yeah. my dog's urn. And right, while right. we'd love to help out with that, there's more cost efficient ways to, to go about that. So we suggest, you know, maybe go to your trophy shop or something like that. Absolutely. Uh, but a few and far in between of those, there's a lot of things, you know, um, but part of what we were talking about before too, Rob, of, of helping the, the customer is, you know, if they're young, um, they may say, hey, you know, okay, that's great. Thanks for helping me. You, you know, anybody does sheet metal? You know, anybody <laughs> that does, you know, blow molding or, or, or whatever. All those seeds that, that I can plant and I can give them just means next time when they, when they have a project and they go, crap, I don't know what to do with this. Oh, you know what? That hanky guy over at Hallmark, he, he pointed me in the do- right direction last time. Let, let's give him a buzz and see what you know, see what they can do. 
Right. And one thing I'll touch on about this, you know, request a quote thing. These things are great. We get these as well as they come in for people in our territory. Right. So mm -hmm. if you're an engineer out here and you're watching this, let me tell you something that is always a question is always very helpful for Hallmark. Send us a picture so we know what we're looking at and we know what it looks like. A lot of times we get these requests and they're pretty detailed, but nothing works better than a picture. And whenever I talk to Tom Keith, Tom Bush, either one of them, when we have a picture, everything just moves a lot faster. Is that a fair, that's a fair statement, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. If, if you have a, a, a membrane switch and you say, I need to make this membrane switch, but you know, the company that did it for whatever reason, I, I, I can't get it. Send me the switch. Yeah, that's even better. Through. You know what I mean? We can look at your graphics. We, we have a color spectrometer. We can match, um, you know, whatever, if it's, uh, you know, a coffee mug or if it's a grandma's apron or whatever it happens to be, if there's a specific color that you require, we can match that. Our process says that as soon as we match that, we're going to send that chip to you. Because in our world with ISO and all the other requirements that we uh, hold ourselves accountable to, everything we do gets approved. There, yep, yep. There's nothing that goes through this, this plant without being approved by you, the customer, um, to make sure... I always like to say the worst thing that I can ever have is a surprise. That's I right. Surprise. I don't like surprises. I know that's I right. Make sure when you open up that box, you don't go, what the heck is this? I, that's not what I ordered. <laughs> I've had that happen before. <laughs> right. Perfect. So, uh, you'll, you'll learn a lot from those kind of things. Well, this has been a lot of fun, man. I uh, yeah, I appreciate you coming on. And, you know, again, guys, the website is hallmarknameplate.com. Don't go to hallmark.com. I'm going to assume that might take you to the card shop. You don't, you know, we don't want that. So go to hallmarknameplate.com. You know, you can check out all the products. You can contact them to get a quote, send pictures. If you have a sample, send a sample. John and the two Toms, I'm sure there's other people involved. We'll, we'll get you squared away. Um, you know, hopefully maybe next year we'll both finish in first place and the Ravens will get to play the Buccaneers and maybe I'll make a trip down to Florida or you can make a trip up here and and we'll uh, we'll, we'll go to the game together. That's um, not really a plan. Yeah. So again, man, thanks so much. I really appreciate Thank it. You know, right. and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk soon. Sounds great. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Appreciate it. Everybody. All right, guys, that was John Hankey from Hallmark Nameplate. Again, go check out the website. It's hallmarknameplate.com. They can help you out with all your nameplates, all your membrane switches, all your graphic overlays. They even do the electronic assemblies, the PCBA stuff. Go check it out. They're a really great company. I know you heard what he said. I promise you guys, these are some of the happiest guys on planet Earth. So go check them out. With that being said, I'm Rob Brunson with Wallace Electronic Sales. This has been the Electronic Intervention. Thanks so much for stopping by. We really appreciate your time. Thanks everyone so much for watching the stream. It's Rob Brunson with Wallace Electronic Sales. We want to provide you and your company with quality and competitive solutions. We don't care if you're a small OEM, a medium-sized OEM, or a large OEM. We have solutions that we can provide to everybody. Feel free to drop me an email at rob.brunson at west-inc.com. Again, that's Rob Brunson at west-inc.com. You can also check out our full OEM line card on our website, and that's at west-inc.com. Dot com. Again, that's at west-8.com. Thanks so much again for watching the stream, and we look forward to talking to you soon.